These are the tools and plugins I cannot live without as a full-time product designer. In today's video, I'm gonna show you my real process, the one I use every single time, whether I'm starting an app from scratch or adding a new feature. First, I'm gonna steal like a designer. So I'm gonna download all the competitor apps on my phone and test every flow, mark what I like, what I don't like and what can be improved. Also like to use the website, which is called Mobin, where I can grab different screenshots from existing app without downloading them on my phone. So I'm gonna search for every feature I'm planning to design and copy either a single screenshot or a whole flow. Then I dump all the screenshots inside Figma and analyze the behaviors and different patterns. What is predictable, what's outdated, what I can do differently not to confuse people. I will categorize them into different categories, for example here I have order tracking and all the screens related to order tracking. Here are other UI that I found interesting. Similarly, I did for the AI chatbot feature, drop all the screenshots and so on. If it's a brand new app, I like to take all the product brief inside ChatGPT first. I will ask him to outline the MVP, which is the minimum valued product for me. So which features I should prioritize first, which features I should be designing later and what the whole roadmap will look like. I also like to brainstorm with ChatGPT because the product brief is the one that my product manager gave it to me and I like to question it and put my own input. So I will ask ChatGPT if the idea I have for this feature is good or bad, or maybe something can be improved. And the last thing I like to use ChatGPT for is to take all the project requirements and split them into a smaller tasks. I know a lot of designers are worried that AI is gonna replace them, but honestly, tools like this just speed up your thinking. The creative decisions are still yours to make. So once I know exactly what I'm building, I'm gonna jump into Figma and do the lo-fi wireframes. And there is this plugin that's gonna speed up this process for me massively. It's called UX Pilot, and basically it can create lo-fi or hi-fi wireframes for you. It all runs inside the Figma, so you don't need to open some external tools, and the interface is quite simple. So you specify what you want, whether it's the wireframe or hi-fi design, select your type, whether it's mobile app or desktop, how many screens you want per generation, and in free version, you're gonna use the standard design system, but with paid version, you can use your own design system if you have one in Figma. So we're gonna write our prompt and the more specific you are, the better. So I ask you to create onboarding process for new users. The user need to have an invitation code to access the app. User need to give an email address, full name and create password. I want one or two welcome screen steps, make it modern and minimize style. Next, I'm just gonna hit generate wireframe and it's now gonna generate the wireframe for me in the background. It takes maybe a minute or two and it's generated a four decent option. Then I'm gonna refine my prompt, maybe try different direction and hit generate again and do that a few times until I find the direction I wanna go. Am I gonna ship it that way? No, but it's helping me to get the direction I want and speeding up the thinking iterating process. I also like to use the same plugin on FigJam to create diagrams, flows, information architecture and specify all the edge cases that might happen in the app. This plugin actually does way more, I'm not gonna go into details, you can create wireframes, ask for design critique, check accessibility and way, way more. If you wanna check it out, there is a link in the description so you can try for free. I use it mostly for lofi wireframes and general brainstorming. So once all the flow is sorted, I have everything mapped out, did the lofi wireframes, I'm gonna start on the actual design. We're using design system at work, which means we have already the patterns, inputs, typography, colors, spacing scale, everything in place and documented. So I will be using that. We're also using light and dark mode in our app. So I will make sure to design for both color variation. I always like to use as close real data and content as possible because using placeholder content is literally a waste of time. Everything looks balanced when the username is, for example, John Doe, but it doesn't look balanced when the username is far, far longer. So I wanna make sure we are using the final copy and the data, which is as close to real one. Then I connect all the screens in Figma with the prototype mode, 
I'm gonna make sure all the states behave correctly. So this could be for example like input states where then is a field input, focused input. Then we have view with the keyboard, also transition between screens. So everything is already gonna feel like the working app. If a user has to stop and think, I probably added one step too many. Once all the screens are connected in a prototype, it's time to click through them. I never do that on desktop because everything can look great on 32 inch monitor, but it's gonna look squashed on mobile. So what I like to do instead is open the Figma mirror app on your phone and import the prototype there. I'm gonna click through the app on my actual device and refine stuff on the go as needed. But the testing doesn't end there. We always test internally in the office. We're just watching different teammates how they actually interact with the prototype. Sometimes we will test it with real users, but honestly, it's expensive and time consuming. Most teams don't have time and budget for it. So about 90% of time, I would say we just test internally in the office or just use intuition. <laughs> And that's normal. I've worked with startups as well as larger companies in the past 10 years and rarely you go to real users at this stage. You don't need 100 opinions to fix a design. Sometimes it's just this one honest reaction that can help you a lot. That's been said, once the prototype is approved, it goes into developer handoff. Because everything is done with our design system, all they have to do is plug and play the functionalities. In my current role as a senior product designer, the handoff is not only the Figma design, but also the API documentation. And that's usually enough for them to start building. If not, they just call in me at random times and asking questions. <laughs> they release the app bit by bit, on the test flight, which is the iOS testing environment for developers. There might be some design inconsistencies or the feature might work not as specified, so we're gonna fix that. And then we push into App Store as well as the Google Play Store. And this is where real feedback starts really in. App reviews, analytics, support tickets, that's where iteration really begins. In reality, this is an endless circle because the app doesn't finish when it's launched. There are constant improvements, iterations, getting user feedback, and just improving, 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 improving. And there you have it. That's my complete process. The research, the wine framing, prototyping, testing, and testing again. It's not as fancy as it can look when someone telling you you're gonna be UI UX designer, but, but it's real. That's what works for me for many years now. Probably it's not the same as they teaching on courses on universities, it's a bit shorter version, way more speed up version, but in reality the change is happening so fast that you don't have time for all the full cycle. <laughs> Let me know in the comments how this process looks at your workplace. Thanks for watching and see you next one. Bye!